Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video. My beloved wife cheated on me and my daughter is in mine. How can I move forward as well as shake angry feelings? The duration of this discussion will be considerable. My wife and I have been married for 21 years at the time of writing. My assumption was that was one of those miracle marriages since we never argued. I seem to be the best of friends with her and so on. Our 15-year-old daughter received a 23 and me item as a birthday gift from a friend. We weren't connected, according to the information provided. She had me do a swab as well as her mother and her 14-year-old brother. She and I were the only ones who looked to be connected, except from her brother. So I went ahead and had a paternity test done, and lo and behold, she was not my daughter. My ex-wife cried and pleaded for me to pay attention to her but I had become indifferent to her pleadings and pleas. It's one thing a lie, but learning that the source of my life's illumination was not even slightly related to me was devastating. Don't get me wrong, I love my kid to the extreme. It doesn't matter what, she is still my daughter. My allegedly malicious impulses, on the other hand, are what I'm most afraid of. I've never been like this before, and I know it's because I'm upset, but I really don't want her to suffer any longer than she has to. The kids loathe her to the very core of their being. However, I am aware that she is still their mother, and I do not want them to resent her in the process. Her mother, father, and siblings are all mortified by her behavior. Her sister hasn't been in touch with her in a few months. We all grew up together, so it hit hard for everyone. Again, this makes me feel incredible, which makes me apprehensive since I don't want her life to be in shambles. But I can't help but smile when I realize that something in her life is about to come crashing down around her. Both of my children are now living with me, since they do not have a positive opinion of their mother at this time. Because they are now refusing to speak with her, I am considering having the chat with them about this matter. That my daughter seems to be overcompensating for her daughterly obligations is the component of this situation that breaks my heart the worst. She expresses her affection for me on a consistent basis and is in many ways the perfect daughter. But I can tell she's doing it because she knows she's not biologically my mother but she has to express to me how much she loves me as soon as possible. I'm going to talk to her about it as soon as I get home tonight, advising her that she is under no obligation to alter her behavior. I just want to know how to get rid of the feelings of despair and rage and vengeance that I'm experiencing, so that my children do not have to worry about school and adolescence. I want to continue to aid them in their future endeavors. Please, any advice you could provide me would be much appreciated. Update 1. To be clear, we did talk about it during the fair, and it was on the program. In all honesty, I didn't want to write that section since just thinking about it makes me physically shudder with hatred. Both my child and I are now doing counseling, because my therapist and numerous readers of my previous essay have counseled me not to press my children to talk to their mother. I have decided not to do so. They are at an age when they can comprehend the gravity of the situation and express their own opinions about it. In order to cope with it effectively, they will need to take their time examining their feelings, with any help they need from me, of course. My daughter's pain seems to have reduced somewhat by this point. Her affections for me have remained unchanged, and she will always be considered my daughter, thanks to my convincing her. Rather than being concerned about our relationship, she seemed to be concerned about her recently found trust issues and trauma from her family's dissolution. She has also said that she feels she is solely responsible for the situation, and that the family would still be together if she had not taken the kid home with her. I hugged her and assured her that she had done nothing wrong and that all she wanted to do was have a good time with her friends and family. The fact that she was going to experience something terrible or that she should never blame herself was completely unknown to her. It was during one of our conversations that she asked me to forgive her and vowed that she would cherish me for the rest of her life. She admitted that she made a mistake, that it had no significance, and that she really regretted doing so. She also expressed her belief that our love will be able to withstand any adversity. I explained to her that if our love was really that strong, she would not have felt the need to seek consolation elsewhere. She seemed to agree. She is now living with her parents at their house. I've spoken with her sister, and she seems to be contemplating suicide. Their attempts to recruit her aid have been unsuccessful, since all she wants to do is spend time with me and the children. As a consequence, I'm now awaiting the opportunity to serve her with divorce papers. I don't want to add anything further to her already existing mental health issues. I offer that my son and daughter speak with her, 
but they were adamant in their refusal. I'm going to go along with their wishes and give them a little more breathing space. The nagging feeling that she doesn't care how it makes any of us feel, and that she's just concerned with the fact that she's going to lose her picture-perfect family and the pleasant life we had before, and that it's all her fault, has been bothering me for a while. I have no desire to try to mend the connection and move on from the experience. That's all I've got for the time being. Update 2. It's been a long time since I've written to you, so I thought I'd send you one last update. My child is doing much better today. The event appeared to have strengthened our bond even more as a consequence of our shared experience. And it isn't even a performance. We are spending more quality time together and having more heart-to-heart -heart discussions. She went to the home of her mother's parents to pay her mother a visit. It was said that she spent much of her time conversing with her grandparents and didn't communicate much with her mother. My child is doing well as well as can be expected. Because he is my child, his experience will be different from that of my daughter. He's still angry at his mother for betraying me, but he's becoming fond of her and engaged in more conversation with her when they went to see her. Due to the fact that he is a protective little brother who despises the fact that his sister was in such pain, he is still uneasy. I really appreciate everything he has done to keep her sane. He conversed with her, went on walks with her, and never gave up on her until she became his wife. I told him how proud I was of him for sticking by her side. He seemed to be moved by my words. I also spoke to him about how he was feeling since I realized that I had been dismissive of him because he was my biological child during the whole process. But since being an IC, he's been able to talk about his issues with me. We've had several chats while he's been here. With regard to my wife, I tried MC to see if there was any prospect of a positive outcome. I tried to believe her when she said it was the only affair she had ever had and that she had no clue she was expecting a child. However, this did not turn out to be the case. In MC, I could look her in the eyes or speak to her, and when I did, it was just to express my disgust at how awful it made me feel. Even though she sobbed and pleaded on her knees, nothing seemed to change. I couldn't believe she'd never strayed again and I believe she was well aware that it wasn't her child, but she chose me as the most secure option. I'd been taken advantage of and I'm fed up with it. I served her at her parents' house, and she broke out laughing when I told her about it. She screamed at the top of her lungs as she lay on the ground. I couldn't understand a word she said, but I didn't care since I was numb to it. But instead of pleading with me to forgive her, she was taken to the front and, without saying anything, received a firm handshake and nod from her father who had a look on his face that said, I completely understand. After contacting my daughter's biological father, we were able to get his medical information. Since she already had a father, she said that she does not want to have anything to do with him or his family. I'm not going to make any effort to talk her out of doing it. But I'm scared she'll want to get in touch with him one day and get really close to him, and I'll be forgotten about. However, I make an effort to push it to the back of my mind and only let it to come out during IC sessions. That is exactly where we are at the moment. My children and I are trying all we can to be positive. In the unlikely event that anything significant happens, which I doubt, this will be the last update. Thank you to everyone that helped me and communicated with me after I received their assistance. Every bit of support and advice you've given me has been much appreciated. Thank you for taking the time to read this.